My father and I wrote the book of forgiving because we know that there is so much pain in the world. Um, so many people are walking around with hurts that they can't get over, with resentment that they feel just stuck in. And forgiveness is the only way out of the hurt and the resentment. The process of forgiveness is really simple, but it's not easy. It's four steps. First, you tell the story because you can only heal a hurt that you can name. And then you name the hurt. Um, how did what happened affect you? And then you may offer forgiveness. Be prepared to let go of the hurt and move on. And then you can reconcile the relationship or you can release it. The process of forgiveness is a process that is applicable in every sphere of life. So it's applicable personally, that I have to forgive myself for some of the things that I have done or some of the things that I have not done. We all have failures and shortcomings that are um, horrible for us to face into. Um, but if we're able to face into them in a spirit of forgiveness, um, be able to be a little bit tender with ourselves that helps us in our lives to be tender with other people. And forgiving is interpersonal. And so that means that um, I can forgive you, you can forgive me. So between two people, forgiveness is very much a uh, a possibility and if you're in relationship with anyone you'll know that forgiveness is maybe quite often a necessity and forgiveness can be institutional um, sometimes our institutions don't serve us as well as they should and we need to be able to confront those institutions that serve us poorly, but we also need to be able to find a way to forgive and move on so that we can continue to thrive as communities, as societies, as nations, as a world. And we know from um, even the most casual glance at world history that between nations um, where forgiveness has not uh, occurred, that war becomes war, resentment becomes resentment, retribution follows retribution, and the cycle of violence and war continues. And yet where forgiveness has occurred, then you have the opportunity for countries, for nations, for our world to flourish. In South Africa, after apartheid, we had a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And one of the things that that commission was able to do for us as South Africans was to give us a common history of apartheid. And so because people came forward to share their stories of their experience and to share the truth of what had happened to them and the truth of what they had done. Um, both sides of the conflict in South Africa were able to come to a common story and to come to uh, a sense of being able to move on together. Um, we averted a bloodbath in South Africa uh, because we were willing to find a way to confront that past. Um, in South Africa, we're still in a process. The truth and reconciliation process wasn't a one-time deal that was done and finished, but is a process that continues. We continue to seek ways to be reconciled with one another. And 
here in the Netherlands, um, some stories are uh, brought to the fore, are given primacy and given a platform, and some people's stories are discounted, um, are hidden away, are not part of the commonly accepted Dutch history. And maybe if we learnt the fullness of what Dutch history is, with all of its um, triumphs and successes and beauty and construction and creativity, but also with all of the devastation that has been wreaked um, in countries all over the world. We might have a more um, open heart and a more open society, a society in which all people who um, live here truly feel that they can belong.